DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up the. Good sports talk. It'll tell you a story. Money talk. Says strange things. Nobody placed a bigger bet on himself during the NBA free agency period than Gordon Hayward declined a $34 million option with the Celtics. Agrees with the Hornets on a deal worth $120 million over four years. Carry on, my Hayward son. With Hayward Wayward, Boston filled the drops with point guard Jeff Teague and big man Tristan Thompson, who they hope can work the boards. Last Celtics averaged 10 rebounds in a season was Al Jefferson, 06 07. Rajon Rondo was a rookie on that team. Now he's a two time champion and an Atlanta Hawk. Two year deal for a club that needed to get Trey Young some back. Like, with the Gore Hayes Hayward, uh, situation, big money on the table, and he won a bigger role. Some players that go to certain teams is because they want a bigger role on the team. And I think that's what way Gordon O'Hare would go to Charlotte. He had the bigger money on the table and a chance to have a bigger role with his team and, and prove himself. Because he been in Boston, he been hurt mostly his time there, and he probably want to go prove himself also. And uh, it was a good pickup. Tristan Thompson... For uh, Boston, because they need another big man on that team, because that's what they was lacking in, lack of big man. And then they got a good rebounder in Tristan Thompson. That's what they brought him in for. And Rajon Rondo, he wanted a bigger payday also. Like, that's what he was looking for. Like he could have went back to the Lakers if they would offer him the same thing Atlanta offered him, but he wanted a bigger payday. And uh, it's a good pickup for Trey Young. Have a veteran point guard behind him that can show him the ropes of everything. And that that's a good pickup to have someone in his ear that been in this league for numbers of years. Need that veteranship that's to your young point guard. Court help. The Clippers agreed to a deal with Sears. Serge Ibaka fill the gap left by the new Laker, Montrez Carroll. Ibaka averaged a career high 15 plus points game last season. Oh, there's no place like home, even if Toronto may not be able to play at home. Fred Van Vliet agrees to a four-year, $85 million. Like, they had to replace Marcus Harrell. They lost their sixth man to the Lakers. So they had to find someone to replace him. And Serge Ibaka is a solid player. He can stretch the floor and rim protect. So they, they, there was a good pickup for the Clippers. Fred Van Vliet. Toronto had to keep Fred there. They couldn't afford to lose him. Because Kyle Larry is not going to be there for long. So they couldn't afford to let him go somewhere else and start producing for other teams. Or oh, that would have been a big loss for them on their team. They couldn't afford to lose a good player on their team. So they had they uh, offered him a nice contract to keep him there. <laughs> Deal. Largest contract signed by an undrafted player in NBA history. And Carmelo Anthony smelling roses again agrees to re sign with the Trailblazers. One year minimum deal. Portland needs scores, and Anthony can score the basketball. Adrian Wojnarowski's phone does not have an off button, and we're all better because of it. All right, NBA, how, how does the Gordon Hayward deal go down with Charlotte? Uh, Neil, in 2014, Gordon Hayward was playing. With Utah, he was a restricted free agent. Michael Jordan and the Charlotte Hornets signed him to an offer sheet. Now, Utah matched it. Uh, but Gordon Hayward, his agent, Mark Barlstein, you know, remembered uh, the effort that Charlotte made to try to get him uh, back east then. Well, they were able to pull it off this time. He had talked with a number of teams about sign-and-trade scenarios, including his hometown Indiana Pacers. You know, but Charlotte was able to create the salary cap space. $30 million a year to sign Hayward to, uh, as we reported, a four-year, $120 million deal. He wants to have the chance again to be more of, of a player who's going to impact his team, his role diminish. You know what I'm saying? I just said that. Yes, he got the big money from them, but his role went down when he was in Boston because Everything was running through Tatum and Brown, and now Kimber. So his role wasn't that much in Boston. That's why he did not 
sign with Boston again and take that thirty four million because he feel like he don't have a a role there like that. His role is small. He want a bigger role like he had in Utah, where he could impact a team and feel like he can help them. <clears throat> As time went on with the injuries, the emergence of uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in that Celtic front court. All right, so when Boston knows, hey, Hayward's not coming back, where does their focus turn? Well, they got a commitment today from Tristan Thompson, free agent center from Cleveland, who they had talked on and off again about trading for for a number of years. But, you know, listen, to get the money off of their cap with Gordon Hayward this year certainly allows them some flexibility to do some things. While it was, it was nice to have Hayward at $30 million a year, it didn't exactly financially balance out their roster to have that much money all tied into one position on the team. All right, Rondo's got a couple rings, one with the Celtics, one with the Lakers. Now he's, now he's a hawk. What's he bring to Atlanta? Yeah, he goes there two years, $15 million. And this is a, a, an Atlanta team that wants to get tougher. They want to get more physical. They want to get better defensively. You know, they can score the ball. Uh, they need that leadership in the, uh, in the locker room. That's what you need on the team. When you have that type of leadership on a young team, it can help the young players elevate themselves and understand what it takes to win this league. Take them to get a chance to get in the playoffs. But you need that, that leader structure in the locker room. You need that veteran presence around the young players to balance things out with them, to be able to show them what to do, how to win, how to be consistent. <laughs> Built around Trey Young, Rondo can play a leadership role on a very young team and a team that, that hopes, I'm not sure they're a playoff team this year, but they want to get closer to the postseason and start competing in the East uh, you know, to play, uh, to play in the playoffs. When it comes to the NBA, nobody works harder, nobody does it better than you, Adrian Wojnarowski. Uh, thanks, Neil.